I wanted to do something interesting for July, and I especially wanted to do something today, because today is, well... So we're gonna continue what we started two weeks ago. It should be no surprise to anybody that I really like video games. It's not a sentence I don't think people can't comprehend. I, a lot of people like games, and it's a subject I've always wanted to talk about. But director, you're a film YouTuber, you can't talk about movies, yada yada yada, that's not your area, yeah, yeah, well, movie producers have been making video game movies for years without any regard, so I think that's enough of a loophole for me to fit in. Still object? Too bad, it's my birthday, deal with it. And besides, if you wait around long enough, I might tell you about how you can do a video game adaptation correctly. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Video Game Month. So you know that loophole I talked about last time with German tax law and Alone in the Dark and Uwe Boll and whatnot? Well, we're gonna talk about a movie that kinda did the same thing, sort of. But it's also a video game adaptation as well, so that kind of works in our favor a little bit. But instead of a survival horror genre, we're gonna switch over to puzzle platforming. We're going to talk about the 1996 start of a franchise and its subsequent movie adaptation, Tomb Raider. So like last time, before we start talking about the movie, let's talk about the game real quick for context. The original Tomb Raider was released in 1996 for the original PlayStation 1, and many cite it as an inspiration for later 3D action-adventure games that would help follow it. Although, from my personal experience with the game, I'm quicker to define it as, as I stated earlier, a puzzle platformer than an action-adventure game, although later titles would heavily increase the combat and slowly taper off on the puzzles within due time. Although unlike Alone in the Dark, which is more of a cult classic than anything, Tomb Raider was heavily influential even outside of the video game industry, not just for its revolutions in game design, but also for its protagonist, Lara Croft, for various reasons. But where other 3D games coming out at the time, like Quake, were going for fast-paced action, Tomb Raider's developers, Core Design and IDOS Interactive, decided to take a much slower, methodical approach to their game design, opting to focus more on platforming and puzzles, and not necessarily so much on the sheer action, which is something I think the newer games kind of forgot. But that doesn't mean the original Tomb Raider doesn't have any gunplay, because Lara is packing heat! She can bounce around like a mad trapeze artist packing two pistols that never reload and never run out of ammo. And that is your main weapon! In Lara's case though, she's going to need those weapons because oftentimes you will be bombarded with enemies out of nowhere, including things like this. This thing scared me as a kid. But seeing as this game focuses on puzzles too, the enemies are not going to be the only thing that kills you constantly. For a T-rated game, this has some pretty f up ways of dying, including this, 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 and even this. Unlike Alone in the Dark though, I recommend you play this for as long as you can without using a walkthrough, as that is kind of part of the experience. The puzzles aren't too difficult most of the time. If you've ever played newer action-adventure games like Uncharted, and some of the 3D Prince of Persia games to some extent, or even some of the newer Tomb Raider games that's come out, you can appreciate where the series has come from and what the original Tomb Raider did to define it. Which brings us to the subject at hand, the movie, or at least the first one, one at a time. We know it had the same method of making money, the tax loopholes, that Uwe Boll did. We know that this is a video game adaptation. We know that these movies have a certain reputation. So with all that being said, does this movie work? Not really but that's kind of why I like it. I know, I know, it's weird. By no account should I like this movie. It commits several of the same sins that I have pointed out in other movies that I've reviewed already. So how come this one is the one that I actually like? Uh, see, here's the thing. When you're adapting something like a video game, you can either try very hard to try to maintain realism as much as possible, or 
you can throw realism completely out the window and do whatever you want. I think that's the main problem a lot of critics had whenever they saw this movie, is that they didn't realize that the source material was kind of bat already. Man, why is this British lady storming into all of these tombs and disrespecting the dead by shooting everything? And how come these statues are so easily killed by our guns? Bitch, there was a dragon in the second game! If you're gonna be mad for the movie including such outlandish incidents when the game had stuff like this, that one's on you, buddy. But see, that's kind of the issue when it comes to adapting video games. In a game, you're often not thinking about the semantics of the situations you're dealing with. Um, excuse me, why are there gorillas in the middle of this tomb? That doesn't seem incredibly scientifically accurate. You're not thinking about that in a game because that gorilla is most likely going to send you back to the next save point, so you better make like Trigger Happy Zoo Security and shoot that ape already. I filled my dead meme quota today. Now see, for a game, that works, but for a movie, it doesn't really translate all too well. A video game can have such a simple premise that it's literally just, here's some demons, here's some guns, have fun. <laughs> Because most of the time during that era, game designers were focused on designing games, not writing fleshed out stories. Whereas movies, on the other hand, are more of a platform where that kind of thing is required. You have to have narrative, you have to have character arcs, you have to have development between those arcs. And to be completely fair, video games have the exact opposite problem. You can have a very fleshed out story in a game all you want, but if the gameplay in the game, the most important part of it, doesn't flow very well, well, you're kind of stuck. In other words, the more a movie is like a game, the less it works as a movie. Which is what the critics would have you believe is the one thing that all video game movies suffer from. And to some extent, they're kind of right, but I'd like to think there's a bit of a silver lining here. So I'd like to use Tomb Raider as an example of maybe approaching how we can do this correctly. So what does Tomb Raider get right? Well, for one thing, like I explained before, the movie's plot is kind of batshit insane, which is exactly what you would expect from a Tomb Raider product. Oh, I'm sorry, you think the plot is stupid because Lara Croft is looking for two halves of a triangle to change the fabric of time before the Illuminati can get their hands on it? Once again, I have to reiterate, second game had a dragon in it. The plot for a Tomb Raider movie doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to be realistic. It just has to be interesting. And even though the plot is a little bit bland, it's what you would expect from a plot of a Tomb Raider game. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the plot for this movie was just a scrapped idea from one of the games. I mean, it is structured like finding the ski on from the first game, so take from that what you will. But let's move on from plot for a second. What else is there to this movie to appreciate that's not story-based? Well, how about the insanely choreographed action scenes? Remember that part where I compared Lara Croft to a mad trapeze artist? Well, there's literally a gunfight involving trapeze. The action in this movie is very John Woo-esque, and I think that's intentional and doesn't really work otherwise. Even if the plot doesn't engage you all that much, you can at least say that the action scenes are at least somewhat entertaining. Hell, in the first game, Lara shot herself up onto a rooftop by severing an elevator cable, so the action scenes here are not out of place in the slightest. Okay, so the action's good and the plot is what you would expect, but what about character? What about Lara herself? The original Lara Croft is blunt, straightforward. She's full aware of the sex appeal that she has, and yet refuses to let anyone define her by just that alone. And the movie's interpretation? Well, let's put it this way. Angelina Jolie is playing Lara Croft. That's pretty much all I have to say. The bombastic femme fatale that is Lara Croft is perfectly personified by Jolie. I couldn't think of a better actor to portray the character in a movie like this. She's hot. She's a badass. She's not gonna let anyone stand in her way. You take one look at her and you immediately know what she's about. That is Lara Croft. Jolie's role as Lara Croft is so significant that it's one of her iconic roles in her entire career. It's just an absolute shame that nearly everyone else is kind of eh. Bryce is an okay character. He reminds me of what eventually would become Alistair in Tomb Raider Legend. Daniel Craig is in this movie, and he's got a very awful American accent in this one. Place is coming down! This is insane! And everyone else is just kind of eh. Like I said before, it's 
not very good, but it's not overtly terrible, so it's fine, I guess. And besides, the original games had voice acting like this. You and that driveling piece of the ski on, you want to keep it so bad? I'll harness it right up your... Larson's voice will never not be funny to me. Tomb Raider is a good video game movie. It's just not a very good movie. And I don't think that's entirely on the filmmakers themselves, because, like I said before, when you're adapting a video game into the movie, it's easy to screw things up. Hell, someone took the easy premise I mentioned earlier of Doom and completely screwed that up at one point. What can I say except Semper Fi, mother and the thing about it is, with video games, you have more leeway when it comes to storytelling, and with movies, that doesn't really translate all that well. There are plenty of reasons about it, like the one I mentioned with survival horror games and how you have direct control over what happens, whereas a horror movie, you're just kind of watching everything happen. But I think in Tomb Raider's case, it's just a simple matter of fun. The original Tomb Raider wasn't meant to tell a story. It was just made to have fun. That is literally the point of a video game. I think the filmmakers understood this to some extent, and really, all they really wanted to do was just make a movie that was fun. And I think they successfully did that. It's a fun movie to watch, for all the right and wrong reasons. It may not necessarily work as a typical movie, but it didn't need to. Hardcore Henry had the same premise. It was literally a movie designed to act like a game, and it's a lot of fun. It doesn't really work as a movie movie most of the time, but it's still a lot of fun. And I think that's the kind of idea that a lot of video game movies are missing. A lot of them are just made to make money, or a lot of them are just made to write a trend. But people are forgetting to have fun while making them. Now, obviously, I don't mean run things like a carnival. There's some time for business and there's a time for entertainment all the time. But remember what I said last time about writing? How I said if you're not interested in what you're writing that nobody else is going to be interested in your writing either? That's essentially what I'm trying to get at. If you're not having fun with what you're doing, if you're constantly irritated by everything, if you're bored, if you're just making this to make money and nothing else, guess what? Everyone else is going to be bored and irritated by what you made. Everyone is going to get the impression that you and everyone else involved in your project does not want to be there and just wants to go home. You'd essentially be making Amazing Spider-Man 2 at that point. Is that really what you want? You're a fraud! <laughs> Tomb Raider is a movie that doesn't have any consideration for quality and is just trying to be as fun as possible. And honestly, I think they successfully did that. So whether you're interested in Angelina Jolie's career or if you're just looking for a fun movie to watch, give this one a shot. It's a big blow to fun. That's really all there is to it. Because Tomb Raider the movie can teach us a very valuable lesson. Sometimes you don't have to be a masterpiece. Sometimes... You just gotta have a little fun. And if anyone on film Twitter tells you differently, tell them they can suck my dense chuck. <laughs>